picked up the cutest thing at Hot Topic. You guys know how much I love The Nightmare Before Christmas by Tim Burton. So they had the actual Deadly Nightshade. I know I shared these on Snapchat, but I'm gonna share them with you guys anyway. And so they're not super huge. I'm gonna use them for like maybe tea or something like that in the kitchen. And this one says Worm's Wart. And this one says Frog's Breath. Are those like the cutest things ever? Oh my goodness, I had to buy them when I saw them. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. And finally, I am doing the Annabelle review for you guys. This will be the second time I have now filmed it. The first one just magically disappeared into the abyss of my SD card. That doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I can't lie and say that I don't get frustrated a little bit. I'm upset not just because I had already done like the critique and review for you guys, but I think I had actually captured evidence on that episode when I was filming it. I heard a little girl giggling in my studio and when I was in here filming, I it sounded like there were just like doors slamming all over the house. And I got really upset because I was like, people know when I film, like they know not to make noises. And I went out there and no one was home. And it was really strange. And I was like, yes, I probably caught that on film. That's okay, like I'll be able to go over it and share it with you guys. And literally when I dropped like all the footage from my SD card onto my iMac, the video didn't exist. It was really strange. I, I did snap about that. So anyway, here we are. Let's do it now again. Let's talk about the part two, basically, of the Halloween special of Ghost Adventures, Annabelle. So let's just first refresh the origin story of Annabelle. Hollywood makes Annabelle look like the most terrifying doll on the planet. But the real Annabelle doll is actually just kind of like an old Raggedy Ann doll. And there is a lot of mystical origins behind this doll. She was purchased at some antique store by this woman who gifted it to her daughter, who I believe was a nursing student or starting to work in nursing out of grad school. And uh, this girl basically said that she would come home, the, the doll would be repositioned. There would be notes all over the house saying, please help or help me. And they really were concerned that the doll itself were was possessed. At some point, this girl did get a hold of Lorraine Warren, who had done several investigations with Annabelle the doll and determined that it was haunted or attached to a demon. This demon was portraying itself to be a child named Annabelle and the Warrens were kind enough to say, I will take the doll, we will store it safely in our museum, which happens to be under their house, in the basement of their house. And basically for so many years, for like what, 30 years, they have had a priest come out twice a week to bless not only Annabelle, but all of the haunted objects that they have inside of their museum. So that is the origin story behind Annabelle the doll. Tony is Lorraine Warren's son-in-law. Lorraine did announce either 2017 or 2016 that she was retiring from doing her psychic work, ghost hunting investigations, including taking care of the museum. So I believe Tony is the one that has taken over you know, as not only the caretaker of Annabelle, but all of the haunted items. John Zaffis, who does The Haunted Collector, is somehow related to the Warrens. I'm not exactly sure what his relationship is to them, but I do know he's related to them. A lot of people assumed that John Zaffis was going to be the one that took care of the museum if something happened to Lorraine, but it sounds like it ended up being Tony, the son-in-law, that, that inherited this big adventure or responsibility, should I say. Right off the bat, Zach announced that Tony has never allowed, 
you know, Annabelle to be out, basically from the museum, out of that glass encased thing that we all see, it's so famous. Why? Because the Warrens wouldn't allow it. You know, sadly, Ed passed away quite a few years ago, but Lorraine's been alive, and you know, Lorraine never publicized Annabelle to the point where she was like trying to make an income off of it, and I think that's because how seriously haunted they believe Annabelle is. And so whatever the offering was to Tony from Zach, it must have been a really good amount of money or some really good deal because I don't think there would have been any other way that they would have agreed to fly Tony and Annabelle from Connecticut all the way here to Las Vegas. Zach comes in, he says, okay, I'm ready to meet Annabelle, and immediately Zach says he feels confused and disoriented. He goes up to Tony and says, is this an effect that Annabelle makes you feel? And Tony says, yeah, it's definitely common where people will feel nauseous, get dizzy, and they just don't feel right. Zach literally said he's getting weird, he's feeling weird. And Tony says, that is exactly what the power of evil will do to you. Mike on audio heard some sort of a little girl whine or a cry and Zach had Tony confirm that it was not him who made that noise. Tony told Zach to wait. He said that he would be willing to let Zach meet Annabelle as soon as he had her prepared and ready. And Tony first asked to have Annabelle um, in there with the holy water itself. I found it a little ironic that they did put Annabelle in probably the most feel-good room inside of the museum, which is the funeral home. It's, it's kind of set up like um, there's a funeral recession that's being made and you pay respects to, um, they have two full body, um, real human bone structures that are in there. And um, I found it very interesting. I always have really good vibes in that room. It just feels really good. It makes you wonder if since that stained glass piece that's in there, since it was from a church, is that what gives you the good vibes that are in that room? So Tony first soaks his hands inside of the holy water. Um, he then starts to pray. He uses prayer beads. He has a bunch of St. Michael stuff. He starts to say the St. Michael prayer. He's sprinkling holy water on the outside of the box of Annabelle, which is locked inside of this big silver black kind of encased, locked, serious box. And then out of nowhere, Tony pulls out freaking welding gloves. And I'm like, Jesus, the Warrens must be really serious about like demonic items and like demonic, um, you know, things that could be haunted. But I just felt like the welding gloves were a little extreme. And obviously that wasn't on Zach's side, that was on Tony's side, that was Tony's decision. So like he doesn't feel like he wants to make direct contact with Annabelle. So it's just kind of like, wow, that's like a little bit extreme if you ask me. So he sets Annabelle inside of a chair that's in the church room um, and he's kind of hesitant at first, you know, when he's like dealing with the holy water. Zach comes in and Zach's like, you know, oh, it's Annabelle. And um, Tony's like, don't touch her. Whatever you do, don't touch her. And Zach starts to kind of edge towards her more and more. They start the investigation pretty immediate because they do have the fans that come in in this episode later. So when they have Annabelle first in this like haunted doll room, later they end up moving her out because Zach gets like a really dark voice on the spirit box on the PSB7 um, that says, you know, he goes, listen to who? And it says Annabelle. I'm glad they moved her out of that room because you couldn't see her really well the way they had the camera set up. And I think it wasn't anyone's fault. It was just because that room is so small and like condensed. You don't have enough space to set the camera up to get like a really good focal point on what we're looking at, which is Annabelle. In the meantime, Bill Chapel is working on some stuff behind the scenes and Bill Chapel is using some sort of device that I think, it, was it the paranormal puck? It may not have been. It was something like that with the EMF fields where it reads it and Bill Chapel says, what do you want? He types it in and it says, you. Zach says, do you want me, Annabelle? And it says, us. Aaron hears that like snarl or growl in his ear that we heard. And then all of a sudden, when they use the SLS, I think Billy's using it, we see this little stick figure pop up on Zach's shoulder. Now at this point, they have brought Annabelle out from the doll room and they've placed her in, this is the very first room you walk in for the museum and that's where she's been placed. So now when I saw this, take in mind, not only was Annabelle sitting in the exact same location that I was sitting in, 
But Zach had me sit in the exact same chair, literally the exact same chair that Annabelle was in. So I sat in that chair. Zach says that he's starting to zone out. He feels like he's starting to feel very connected to Annabelle. He feels like he needs to protect her. Um, and he says he just wants to touch Annabelle so bad. So this is where a lot of you have been reaching out to me asking my opinion on it. A lot of you have already given me your opinions on it. So let's cover that for just a minute. Let's just pause the Ghost Adventures episode right here. A lot of you said that you felt like Zach was being disrespectful. You felt like he wasn't only disrespecting Tony's wishes and requirements, that you also felt like he was disrespecting the Warrens because the Warrens have kept Annabelle so safe and locked up and you know blessed with the priest and all that stuff for so many years and you know there was probably a contract Tony probably said obviously I'm gonna be there to watch it and I don't want you to touch Annabelle and Zach is just getting this weird urge to interact directly with Annabelle I get your side of it I really do get that side of it I understand what you're saying I get that there is a probability, a very high probability, that if Tony witnessed this with Zach and um, didn't want Zach to touch Annabelle, that there's a probability that Tony will take Annabelle back to Connecticut and he'll never let another team or anyone else get one on time, one on one time with Annabelle because he's going to be in fear. They're gonna have that urge once again to touch the doll, to be interactive with Annabelle. So I get what you're saying, I get what you see. But there is a whole other side to this and I have to partially agree with Zach for a couple of different reasons. So just hear me out for just a minute. First of all, Zach did not have a lesser or higher chance getting an attachment to Annabelle just by touching her. Like there's so many shows out there that are like, don't touch this demonic thing, or don't do this, or don't do that. Uh, I don't think it really matters if you ask my opinion if you touch it or not. Just being in the room with that, or interacting with it, or investigating, you have just as much of a high probability of getting an attachment from that item or that location than you would if you were to touch it. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter to me if you touch it or not. If you have some sort of magnetic energy that these energies like, and somehow there's like this puzzle that seems to fit your energy with theirs, just somehow works on the other plane of the other side, if they want to attach themselves to you because of that, then they will. It won't matter if you touch the doll or not. So that's one of the reasons I see it as on Tony and the Warren side as being a little overly dramatic of don't let anyone touch, touch Annabelle. The other side of this is if you give a child a piece of candy and you hold another one in front of them, what are they going to try to do? They're going to try to take that piece of candy. If you tell them they can't have it and you keep dangling it in front of their face, they're eventually going to try to take it from you. So my point of that is, as an investigator, if you tell us not to do something, we're going to want to do it all the more. And for the fact of Annabelle being this sacred item that has been encased and kept locked away from all of us, the entire community of investigators, like the catacombs in Paris, those are hard to get to, okay? Because you need a guide to get down there and you also have to get over to Paris, which, you know, from the States, that's like kind of a journey. So the catacombs are a big deal. But now we're talking about Annabelle, which is something that nobody has gotten to interact with other than people that have gone into the museum. No one has been able to really investigate Annabelle the doll. So of course Zach was gonna get this undefined urge to want to investigate it, to touch it, to interact with it. And it wasn't just the obsession of the darkness and the other side, it's the obsession of interacting with the other side. In all seriousness, I was watching this episode with a bunch of my friends, some of them are investigators but they only do it as hobbies like they don't want to do it for like a profession and all of them said as a seasoned investigator I don't blame Zach I would have wanted to touch Annabelle it has been this locked away artifact and it's been surrounded by so much controversy and news and movies made about it there has been a cultural obsession behind this item 
There is a reason that Zach was obsessed with it. I also have to say that when you have been a seasoned investigator, and I mean like a super seasoned investigator, not just someone that just got into this, not that someone does this like every once in a while for hobby. I'm talking about someone that has been doing this like almost to a professional level like Zach, like myself, like a lot of other YouTubers that are really passionate about the authentic side of investigating. When you have gone to so many places and interacted with so many haunted objects and so many haunted locations, I have to say that it almost feels like when you start your investigation for the night, you begin a transfer into another realm. You begin to transfer into their realm because that is where you communicate with them. It almost feels like you're no longer here on earth. If you're a good investigator, you're trying to discuss things that they've been through, who who they are, um, what they're about, the controversy surrounding it, Annabelle, the demon, the doll. And I have to say that when you have gotten to that point as an investigator, and the point, and what I'm talking about is when you feel more comfortable in the spirit realm than you do here, that means you feel most like yourself. And I know that sounds crazy, but, but let me explain this even a little bit further. When you've interacted with the spirit realm as much as, like for instance, I have, or even Zach has, you realize that materialistic objects here on earth really don't mean that much. Now when I say that, I know I'm like a big makeup fiend, like I love my makeup and I love my fashion and my purses and my shoes. I don't mean they're not necessary for this earth. I just mean there's a point you get where you realize that the spirit realm, you can't take that stuff with you. None of that stuff matters in that realm. The materialistic stuff, they don't matter anymore. So when you're investigating, when you have kind of, I hate to say transcended, but I guess I'll use that word. When you've kind of put yourself in a position where you have been stripped down as an investigator to what it really is, when you have learned investigating at its core is your soul interacting with other souls because your physical body doesn't really matter anymore because you have transferred into their realm, suddenly you can 100% be yourself. So a lot of you guys were messaging me saying, Zach creeped me out, he weirded me out because he was like, I wanna touch Annabelle, I just wanna be with her, I wanna, I wanna just see what, you know, I wanna, I wanna get close to her, she wants me to touch her. He wasn't being creepy and inappropriate. I'm gonna be truthful and tell you guys, that is probably the most raw and authentic Zach that you have ever seen. That is Zach saying, I don't care about the cameras. I don't care about Tony. I don't care about Aaron and Billy and Jay. I am here to communicate with Annabelle and this is truly how I'm feeling. You have to dissect it though, like I have. Like, I understand it seems weird. I understand a lot of you like would not touch Annabelle. If I was in the situation, I'd probably want to at least hold Annabelle. I want to see what it's all about. It's not just the physical item of Annabelle. It is also if there is a demon or energy encompassing this doll to the point where she has been locked away for 30 years. How does it feel? What is it? Is it any different? Does it feel any different? How many people have the opportunity to attempt to hold Annabelle or to touch Annabelle? Not a lot of people. No one has, really. Not even Lorraine does it very often. My point is, I wish the investigation with Annabelle would have gone on longer. I hope that someday they decide to show more footage of what they captured because I'm sure they had to edit it down because they had the guest investigators on. But seriously, I want you guys to appreciate seeing Zach stripped down at his core because he was being the most authentic that I think that I've ever seen him be. He was real and raw and he was dead set on interacting with Annabelle. He may have been in a trance, like a lot of people were like, he was acting so weird, he was like freaking out, he, to he told Tony, I'll give you whatever you want, meaning money is no object. 
I understand it seemed weird, but you also have to understand he was in the middle of an investigation and he has transcended 100% into the realm of paranormal. He was not interacting as a human here on earth. He was interacting in the spiritual realm. And that's really hard for people to decipher because it takes a long time to understand that. It takes hundreds of investigations to get where Zach is at. You have to realize it takes so many energies and connections and interactions and unfortunately being injured in the industry by entities, by energies. Seeing him, to me, stripped down at his rawest form, being truly authentic, not only to himself, to the interaction with the spirits and also in front of the camera, I couldn't have asked for more. I thought it was so genuine and it is what some of us feel as investigators and not all of us want to verbalize it. So I really personally appreciate seeing that side of him. A lot of people are like, oh, Crystal's not into the dark side. She's not, um, you know, she's about the love and the light. And I am, I, I am 100%. Um, I always say like on my intro, it says, it's not always about darkness and demons. That's true, but I enjoy the darkness. There is a Wednesday Adams inside of me that you guys know, you see it sometimes. When I have all my dark makeup on and dark lipstick, and I mean, I wear black all the time anyways, but when I'm feeling really dark, that's my Wednesday Adams. And the dark side of me enjoys dark things in investigating. Does that mean that I like satanic and I like um, demons and I enjoy being around that really dark stuff? No. But I have found through my investigations that some of the most lost souls and some of the most souls that need help, that need the most dire help, are in the total darkness. Meaning maybe surrounded by demons. Maybe they were sacrificed as satanic worship. Some of the darkest souls that need help, that need the most help, need to communicate, that have a message, they are in the darkest spots that I have found on this planet. And that is the stuff that I like. I'm not there to look for demons. I'm not there to look for satanic crap. Like, I don't like that stuff. I don't agree with human or animal sacrifices. I think it's gross and disturbing. But I am there because there has been some serious damage done to maybe human souls, maybe they're not human souls, maybe they're animal souls, maybe they're outer worldly souls. There could be some seriously damaged souls that are being held captive in that darkness. And there's only a few selected people that are willing to go there to try to help or listen or find them. And you do have to be skeptical and decipher, wait, is this something tricking me? Or is this something that thoroughly needs help because even when an energy tries to trick you like let's say it's a demon trying to trick you that oh no I'm good eventually they can't hold the mask up any longer and you will figure it out appreciate this episode with Zach appreciate his authentic side that you got to see and in the comments below you can have whatever opinion you want I totally support all of you guys having different opinions than me but there are not a lot of investigators out there like me, like Zach, like other people that have had so many interactions with energies and, and done so many investigations where you understand where they're coming from. So just try to have an open mind and critically think about what I said when it comes to being authentic and transferring into the spirit realm when you're investigating. Okay, so Tony starts yelling at Zach over the intercom to take control. Um, Billy has a device in his hand. I can't remember if it was an ovulus, but it comes up and it says Anne, which is weird because of Annabelle. Tony says that he needs to ask God for help and he needs to pray. And Zach says, what if I don't want to say that? Okay, a lot of you didn't agree with this either. So I'm going to step in and defend Zach once again. I'm going to defend him because I have made some serious mistakes in the past where I have felt so intimidated and threatened by being surrounded by energies that I'll say a prayer or I'll call for St. Michael or something and then you don't get any more footage for the rest of the night. There is no way Zach was going to stop an investigation with a once in a lifetime doll that no one else has gotten to investigate just so that he could feel protected because he was worried not only for the fact of Ghost Adventures needs evidence 
But because Annabelle, you know, I want to investigate her. I want to communicate with her. I want to see what this is all about. He wasn't going to say a prayer to stop the interaction. He needed some evidence to show us because no one else has had that opportunity. So once again, rather than ridicule him for saying, you know, he didn't want to say a prayer. Why wouldn't he want to protect himself? I agree with that statement sometimes, but he wasn't only doing it for the show. He was doing it for himself. He's investigating something that none of us have ever gotten to see and none of us may never get to see. So once again, just try to see where he was coming from as a extremely seasoned investigator. He said he was getting an irresistible urge to touch her. Could it have been demonic, like, urging him to do it? Who knows? Probably. I mean, if it's an actual demon, probably. But you still need to get evidence. You still want to get evidence and, and do this. Like, we've set up all these cameras. We have all this money into this production. I have to investigate her. I have to see what this is all about. And then we end up seeing Zach grab Annabelle's leg on the thermo cam. And Billy says, why would you do that? Like, <laughs> I feel like Billy is, like, such the dad on set. Like, why would you do that? Go to your room. You're grounded. Tony you know, obviously sees there's commotion going on. He gets up from the room and he goes to remove Annabelle from, you know, the room and, and takes her away. Zach did post to social media um, a few days after it aired that he has not spoke to Tony since he left that night with Annabelle, probably because Tony was really mad. There may have been confidentiality broken when Zach promised not to touch her. Once again, I don't see the big deal in it because I am looking at this from a real perspective. I told you guys like I'm not going to be like overly dramatic like all of these shows on TV are. I don't think you you can get a worse or less um, attachment just by touching something. I'm sorry we have to like bring it back down here to um, being authentic and real and when I say that I mean it because even if there is a demon attached to that doll the doll is just here in the physical side. That's only the physical side. The energy is on the spiritual realm. So it doesn't matter if you touch it or not. If it wants to attach itself to you, it will. Um, they use another device. They say, you know, need something. And then it says Jesus. Um, they think that they're getting some violent thoughts. Aaron looks at Zach and says, dude, you're weird or something like that. And then we cut footage to Zach um, pulling into his house saying that he has 6666 miles on his car. This electric storm strikes, hits the lightning pole right by Zach's car. Freak storm. Well, I can't really say that. Vegas does have a lot of lightning storms because we do live in a valley. So it floods a lot here and, and stuff like that. So that wasn't really shocking to me. But the fact that the lightning hit the pole like right next to his car. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. That was pretty obvious. Okay, so now we're going to cut to the next part, which was the three fans that won um, to go in and investigate the museum alone, basically, from the online competition. So there was an older male, a younger male, and then a girl that were all involved in this. So the younger male, we immediately see him going in, and he's like, upstairs, I know where he was, he was near the Dybbuk box room, <laughs> and he was like, push me, slap me, I don't care, and I was like waiting for him to be like, beat me, bite me, and treat me cheap. And I was like, you're so ridiculous, bro. Like, turn it down a little bit. Like, you're provoking, and you're obviously, like, a wannabe Zach Bagans, and he doesn't really do that anymore, so stop acting like that on television. Greg is walking. Greg is the older guy. He's walking through um, <laughs> the museum, and then he ends up getting scared by one of the animatronics that's going off upstairs. I'm sorry, but Zach knows he did that on purpose. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn off the animatronics. No, you didn't. Like, we know you did it. Like, you totally did that on purpose to freak him out. Greg started, like, shaking and making all these, like, weird faces at the clown, and I was like, oh, it's going to be a good night. The Alex girl ends up going into the art gallery with Greg to look into the Bella Lugosi mirror. This is after the vampire ended up passing out. It appears that they were possibly scrying in the mirror. Once again, it wasn't really clear. I don't expect them to be perfect though because you know they're they're not there to shoot on ghost adventures constantly. So I wish they would have been a little bit more clear on what they were doing. I did find it interesting that Greg started to kind of sway back and forth. Um, and he didn't really look right as he was staring into the mirror. It did appear, though, that Greg was kind of challenging the Bella Lugosi mirror. Um, and Alex kept, just kept saying she thought she was seeing anomalies fly in it, and she said, the mirror looks weird, that's all she said. 
Greg starts to take these really like deep breaths. He said he felt frozen. And, um, you know, once again, I think that he was scrying silently in his head. I went over what scrying was in the last video, so I'm not going to repeat myself again. Alex does this weird, like, turn. She says she thinks she got touched on her leg. She starts to kind of swirl around, and then that's when she starts to feel pressure on her chest. At this point, we see Aaron go downstairs, um, where Bloody Mary had done the ritual downstairs. He went with a younger male into the basement to investigate using the um, Spirit Box PSB7. And it's at this point that Alex, the girl, decides to go into the funeral room by herself. But when Aaron was in the basement with the um, younger kid, they use the PSB-7 and they do get a reaction. They hear something that says, come to me. And the kid investigator is like, oh my god. Like, he was so excited about it. I love to see newer investigators react because I feel like they have bigger... Um, reactions than some of like the seasoned investigators do um, so it's it is good to see younger investigators get excited about getting evidence Billy ends up going into the funeral home with Alex and they keep getting a name come up and it says David Cook Alex does sit down to play the organ which I thought was awesome but then all of a sudden she says she feels like chest pressure and she's not feeling good and Billy's like they like it, keep playing. And I'm like, if she can't breathe and she has chest pressure, don't encourage her to keep playing. And like, what if she passes out? And no, that doesn't necessarily mean that they like you, but it could mean that she's being surrounded by a lot of energy and her body is being physically affected by the electromagnetic fields. So at that point, I really wish they would have had an EMF meter nearby. Um, when someone calls something out like chest pressure or like any pressure on their head or shoulders, that's when you know you need to get like an EMF reading because chest pressure, um, head pressure and shoulder pressure tend to be the one thing that everyone correlates with high EMF fields. So a little disappointed in that, but I get it. They were amateurs trying to have fun. Alex starts to get emotional inside of the funeral parlor and this is exactly why girls should be a part of teams. This is exactly why because sometimes I can't help but feel like girls are more in tune to the emotional side of energies and she did it again later. She got she got emotional again later. Um, when she's standing in there with Billy, she started to sweat. Um, she said she felt like she had needles on her arm. After she sat down and just took a break, they did go back into the funeral parlor. And this is where they got that heart-shaped anomaly, which I thought was so awesome. I've never seen anything like that. And I like it just because you're in a funeral parlor, it has good energy in there, and then a heart floated up. I don't know. It's just the energy you would want to get, you know, while paying respects to loved ones. We've all had people, sadly, in our lives that have passed away. And I just felt like that was a really feel-good sort of way Um to end the episode. The very last scene we have is Zach going upstairs to turn off the animatronics and shut down the AC and all that stuff. And there is a balloon that is quite literally following him um, that went through the banister and it was a really awesome piece of evidence. It seemed very peaceful, but that doesn't mean it was considering Annabelle was in there. Either way, I thought it was such a great way to end the night and end the investigation. What did you guys think about this episode? Were you happy about it? I thought it was much better than the first part of the Halloween episode, obviously. Um, and just understand that I'm backing up Zach because not a lot of people have as much under their belts as far as investigating as he does, as I do, as other people do. I'm sure if there's a lot of seasoned investigators out there, they would probably say the same thing that I did. Make sure you guys give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time.